the purpose behind this is just to be able to move it. It's just so you can move and you can change locations. So I got mirrors here, just like a car for safety. So right now I'm just checking my blind spot to the left so I can enter the roadway. Hey folks, it is Wednesday, October 2nd. The time right now is 4.52 p.m. and the temperature is 19 degrees Celsius. And I'm here in the Junction neighborhood, joined by Ryan from tinytinyhomes.ca. How's it going? How's it going, Ryan? Pretty good, pretty good. Nice to see you again, Johnny. Good to see you too. So a month or so ago, maybe a little over a month ago, we did a video where we featured your first prototype unit of yes. the tiny, tiny home. And since then, you have made an upgraded version I, of that? I made a second one. It's uh, version two. Uh, this one on Saturday is going out to a client in Kitchener. So it's going to be the first one that somebody's actually living in. Neat. So in a minute or two, we'll be at that unit. In that first video, I know we went for like a 15 minute walk and we talked a lot about you and your background and what the mission of this project is and a lot of the challenges that people experiencing homelessness face. So I would recommend if you missed that video, do check it out. There'll be a link to that in the description. And if you want to learn more about Ryan and tinytinyhomes.ca, there'll be a lot of information in that first video we did, as well as the tinytinyhomes.ca website. He's got an Instagram handle as well, as well as TikTok. And he has started a YouTube channel that has gained a fair bit of traction. So do check him out. So what yeah, those means. And this here is Dundas Street and he has parked the tiny tiny home right around the corner. What do you call this? Like version two? Does it have a name? Version 2.0. Uh, it's not the quite the final model, but it's definitely an upgraded model from the prototype. Oh, and it's already got people checking it out. that happens an awful lot. So Ryan's parked it around the corner from here. There it is. And you feel like taking it for a little spin for us? Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. Let's that, go. Let's go for a ride. That's something we didn't do in that first video that I think people would have liked to have seen. So here's the new upgraded model. So what we'll do is I guess Ryan will just ride it half a block or so in front of the park and then we're going to get inside and we're going to explore awesome this new model and he'll point out all the differences. Awesome. So it's only uh, it's only one speed. I put it in a single gear to make it very very easy to pedal. Uh, the purpose behind this is just to be able to move it. It's just so you can move and you can change locations. So I got mirrors here just like a car for safety. So right now I'm just checking my blind spot to the left so I can enter the roadway. And this one doesn't have a motor, it is? No, it is only pedal powered. Uh, save a little bit of cost on uh, putting a motor in and the cheaper they are, the more units I can make. And the easier to fix? Yes. Are you breaking a sweat? You can be honest. Uh, little bit <laughs> little bit so we're gonna stop right here now i know the primary audience for this would be people experiencing rough times but there was a certain amount of viewers who reached out and said they might like these recreationally there was a lot of people that reached out to uh want they want these recreationally if i was to do that i, I that would definitely be an electric model for people to be able to ride around but so one key difference from the last model is I got a jack down here. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to put it down and sorry about the noise. Now that that jack is down, it serves a couple purposes. Number one, it's secure stability. But number two, very big, is it's security. It doesn't move when that jack is down. A lot of people had asked, 
Uh, what if somebody rides off while you're sleeping? And that jack helps prevent that. You can also put a lock through the front wheel like a normal bike. So this is for security and stability. Let me uh, show you around. All right, let's take a look. It certainly smells very new, and we've been joined by a wasp, it seems. I guess I didn't shut the screens. It is quite similar to the last one, but I can already spot some differences. So, some of the differences from the last one is before I had a microwave up here. This one doesn't have the microwave. It was... It was an afterthought to put a microwave in last time and it just it, it it was too much so i didn't put it in there this one also has a sink so the sink here i don't have water in the tank but it's just a little rechargeable pump off amazon very simple very easy to repair and you have your water tank down there another big difference from the last one as well is this here this is your uh this is the thermostat for the 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 furnace this will keep you warm in the winter time a lot of people were asking about heat so this time i put a furnace in this is your USB. Down here is your electric electrical room with your batteries and the fuse box down here. Below the electrical room is where the furnace is. Below here, you can see the out the outtakes from the, the furnace, the intake and the outtake. Uh, it puts out 5,000 BTU, which is more than enough power to absolutely cook this thing. So if we get hit by one of those classically cold Canadian winters, people, people aren't gonna 100%. This would survive an Alberta winter. It's awesome. And I noticed there's no burner in this one. So I just, you can buy a burner and set set it here. Uh, that's uh, something you can do. I just haven't put the burner in. Uh, this also has two windows where the last one just had one window. I put a window in the back so you can get a cross breeze, which is really nice. It also makes it feel a lot more open and roomy. It's amazing what a window can do. And do you want to switch sides and you can show us sure so if you just uh, stand by the kitchen there Johnny I'll, I'll show you a few things so this comes down here just like before and this is a you, new surface it feels like yeah so this is this is vinyl so it's easier to clean it's easier to clean and maintain and it's the same as the last one as well with you have your storage underneath the bed which is 12 cubic feet. It's a ton of storage. So it's very, very similar to the last one, but there's a few differences. I really like the vinyl. It, it just, it's a lot more comfortable. It is, and easy to wipe down. Very easy to wipe down, easy to keep clean. And if you spill anything on here, because you can't, you can't just pull this out and buy, put a new one in. So it's nice to be able to clean it. And it's still got the ventilation. Ventilation is super, super, super important. In Ontario here, it gets really hot and really humid, and to be able to ventilate it and keep yourself cool in the, the summertime is, I think, just as important as uh, staying warm in the winter. And how about this? Any changes here? This is the same as last one. Just got a desk that comes down. Uh, what I like about this is it's also a shelf, but when you close it, it keeps everything on the shelf while you're riding. This is pretty cool too. I like this little thing. So this turns on your furnace. It's oh, that's uh, neat. yeah. You push and hold the button, and it just turned on the furnace. I can hear it. And how long will this battery last on one charge? Uh, Let's say you're blasting the furnace. So the furnace, it only, the only thing that produces heat is the it's a diesel furnace oh it's diesel so it just runs the fan and the fan is only a couple amps was that a diesel tank i saw on the front of y the yes it was i just want to pop up and take a quick look at that 100 oh that is neat so that's where your heat is going to come from is the diesel so this is your tank it's a 10 liter tank on the low setting which this is a very small environment you won't need to run it on anything more than low uh it sips one liter a day so this should potentially last 10 days of leaving it on low all day. Is diesel easy to acquire? Uh, at most gas stations sell diesel and it's under $2 a liter. So your heat could be under $2 a day. And you would literally just ride this into the same place you'd take your car and- 100% and just- up? That's neat. Fill up with diesel.
That's neat. Your uh, phone keeps blowing up. <laughs> yeah, have, I, you, have you had a lot of attention since that first video we did? Uh, too much attention. It's uh, it's a full time job just answering the phone. A lot of questions, people uh, calling, reaching out. A lot of people want to help, which is awesome. Uh, Lord knows I need the help. It's there's a lot to do with uh, marketing. There's a lot to do with uh, video editing. Uh, there's a lot of logistics with this, so it's been very helpful to people that have reached out and offered their help. Well, that video, I think we had no idea it was gonna do so well, but it's almost at a million views. It's over 900,000. It's got thousands of comments on it, and I think your socials have yeah, gotten a lot so of attention since then as well. It's really, it's really got a lot of attention to my social account, and thank you everybody who's come to my social account and subscribed, because you've all are fans of Johnny, so thank you for, for coming by. Uh, the more and more this gets shared and gets out there, uh, the more and more the program is going to take off. One of the things I really struggle with is I struggle with funding, and the more and more people that know about it, that's what brings me funding. That's what's brought me donations. It's just the awareness, so please uh, share. And this one has someone's name on it already, so this, yes. is, this is going out to the real world. This is going out on Saturday to a client in Kitchener. Uh, I won't be doing a, a giveaway video with that client just because they've, uh, they've cho chosen to remain anonymous. So I'm going to respect that. Uh, I will be doing a video of the process of loading it up on the trailer, driving it out to Kitchener and getting it ready to drop off. Neat. And that first prototype that we, we explored, where is that one? Uh, it's still downtown being uh, showcased. It's going to be given away very shortly. Oh, awesome. And when you make another one, is that going to further improve upon this one? Like, I imagine it's not in its final form. Uh, it's not in its final form yet. Uh, each, uh, this build is a little bit different than the last. Uh, I'm, I've almost got all the design changes ironed out. Uh, the next one, the door, the door will be in a slightly different place. Uh, so there's, yeah, a few little design changes that come with each model. Neat, and I think what we'll do, we're gonna wrap this video up in a minute. Well, this portion of the video, and then we're gonna, Ryan's gonna ride this over to his workshop and we'll show you around in the space where he's been working. And I think there's some hope and aspiration to upgrade to perhaps just get those economies of scale a little more in his favor so he can start to maybe crank these out a little bit faster. But man, it is impressive. And even though, or we're not downtown in a high traffic area, you already, had people out in front of it, gawking at it, looking at it. I think it's, it's a it, big head turner. It gets a lot of attention, especially when I'm riding it down the street. People are just cranking their neck out their car, looking at it, what is that? And it's awesome too, because everybody in traffic stops for me because they, they want to see it. So it's easy to get through traffic. Cool, and just before we head over to your workshop, is there anything else you want to share? Anything we should know about it? I, I, I think we covered everything. You, th you think we've got everything? All right, so we will teleport over to the workshop. But this, again, you can find out more about this project on tinytinyhomes.ca, including how to contribute. But it is a very almost elegant solution to a problem. I don't think that's the right word, but I think the word we used last time was dignity, but... It's a dignified solution. Now, one thing I want to be actually very clear, this is one thing I can add to it. This is not a solution to housing. This is a temporary measure so people aren't living so rough while waiting permanent housing. Nobody should be living in something like this. People should be in permanent housing. Uh, the government needs to step up and we need to make more housing available for our citizens. This is a temporary measure until people get into permanent housing. That's all it is. And as you mentioned, the, we covered a whole lot in that first video, but if you're wondering, this is perfectly legal. He can park it anywhere a bicycle can, bicycle can go. So yeah. under the Highway Traffic Act, it's a bicycle. So I park it on the side of the road and I don't have any issues because uh, there's no parking restrictions for bicycles. Awesome. Well, uh, I guess it'll be bittersweet to see it go on Saturday. Yeah, uh, this one, I, I, <laughs> each one I fall in love with a little bit, so. All right, well, thanks for showing it, Ryan, and we will flash over to your workshop now and 
just give you guys a little peek at what that looks like and then that'll be that for the video so thank you ryan cool and we are now at the shop so apparently this is where all the magic happens so you built this one in the shop ryan yeah i uh, built it here it's a single car garage uh not a ton of space but uh, i make it work and the prototype model we saw in the previous video you built that one here as well yeah i built that one here as well uh this is uh the setup i uh, got a few tools here uh it's a little bit messy right now because i just finished the build so uh forgive forgive the mess no worries no worries that's neat so i guess you're you're quite handy at using all these tools which i have no idea what they are i'd probably lop my arm off if i tried and how long does it take uh, to make one of these in here? Takes uh, takes about 100 hours. I would say 30 hours of those are driving around collecting materials and 70 hours of build time. Uh, sourcing the materials is something that definitely takes a while. Are there any challenges that working in such a small shop brings for this? Space. Uh, I have very 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 small uh there's not a lot of space to store material i need to buy materials in quantity which i'm not able to do in the shop so i end up uh, doing a lot of driving so i guess the goal is to scale up and move into a bigger space yes 100 percent. i need about four times this space and ideally where would that be located <sighs> ideally downtown toronto uh, which is super, super, super so expensive. So not next door to like a Home Depot or something. You'd want no, to no. Uh, downtown Toronto. So uh, part of the community members, well, the community member be serving is homeless people. Uh, most of the homeless people are probably going to be downtown with these. So it would be nice to have it downtown, not just for the logistics of dropping off uh, the campers, uh, for service as well. So if they need help servicing, at least I'm close. So that would be an additional service or value add if someone like. Like say this new feature you added to this one, this foot, if, if that for whatever reason failed, you could come take a look and see what you could do to, <sighs> to repair or replace it or... 100%. Uh, other things like uh, somebody gets a flat, which is gonna be a big thing. Somebody runs over a nail, they're gonna need help with that. Uh, part of the, if a chain falls off, they're gonna need help with that. So there'll be certain things that they'll definitely need help with. So this is basically just a, a common garage and a, and a house that yes. you have turned into a full-blown workshop making these tiny homes that's awesome is there anything else about the shop you want us to know or share uh if anybody has a bigger shop and they give it to me for a good price let me know please i'd uh, really appreciate it all right and all of your contact information tinytinyhomes.ca is the best place to find it yes 100 percent. if uh anybody wants to reach out to me i've had caught a lot of traction with my idea and a lot of people are trying to do nefarious things so if you need to reach reach me go to my website tinytinyhomes.ca official means you have a website you have an instagram you have a tiktok you have a youtube but the best way to reach you is just go to your website and use one of the contacts there thousand percent all right awesome well i want to thank you for showing off this new unit it was really neat to see it out on the street and i guess what will be its natural habitat and i want to wish you well as you continue on this endeavor and maybe as you progress and we see some new models we can come back and do some updated contents and we can content and we can share that as well i think the first video we did there was just so much interest and intrigue in the idea that i think people want to watch this journey and see how this grows and evolves and see how you help make people's lives better so We'll definitely uh, revisit this. And I'm curious to see how you scale it up. You know, get a bigger workshop. Maybe get some more hands on deck helping you. That's definitely going to have to happen. Uh, I need some skilled trades. I'm going to have to hire a welder. I'm going to have to hire a carpenter. Uh, going to have to hire people to do this. Because I, I have a full-time job and I really, really like what I do. Uh, provides good, nice family stability for my family. So I, I would like to make something that's self-sufficient well personally i want to thank you for for doing more about this problem than i or most ever have it's definitely not something gone unnoticed and something i really appreciate and i'm sure so many viewers do as well so it was fantastic to meet you again ryan thanks johnny and again to viewers if you want to continue to follow ryan he does have instagram TikTok, 
YouTube, which he admittedly isn't posting a whole lot on. But. Uh, it's uh, Tiny Tiny Homes. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. I'm trying to get better with my content. Uh, it's a work in progress. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. And again, there's a link to how you can contribute or just contact Ryan as well on tinytinyhomes.ca. Well, it was good to meet you again, Ryan. Thanks, Johnny. And as I always say in my videos, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks. Right. Take care, guys.